this is a tutorial for assignment number three uh, in InDesign. So you're starting with the file number uh, 05 start. So it's from lesson five from your ebook right there. Um, I have just the file open right there. It's like the lesson um, is flowing text. And um, this is basically what you're going to end up with. This document right here with all the text flowed in the right spot. I'm just going to show you what it looks like. There's that PDF, the end dot uh, preview uh, PDF there in the uh, uh, files in the uh, Teams channel, in the InDesign Teams channel. And I'm showing here in this PDF, I'm showing all the guides. You know, they're here. There's the, the, the pink line around, and that's your uh, uh, bleed, uh, your margins right there with your columns. And this is kind of like how to how the document should look like, right? So basically, with the text all flowing over from one page to another, et cetera, et cetera, with the uh, photographs. And there's a few things that I will fix along the way because um, there's a couple of er well, not errors, but a couple of things that you can fix as well. So this is just a quick preview of it. So, um, you know, always look around, look at all the files that we uh, submit to you guys, look at your InDesign document, you know, just look around what it looks like. So you can tell that there's, you know, two pages facing, there's a little object there, which is a text object. There's this already, this big headline right here. There's already a couple of text frame right in here on the, on the left and right side of the first page to get started. Um, there's something here that says June, June, July 2018, and that you can tell that it's in the master page because it has that, uh, it's locked, number one, and it has a, a dotted line around it when you zoom out a little bit. Um, and then as you scroll down, you can see that there's basically nothing. It's a bare bone document, just images are just placed in there. Um, so we'll get uh, we'll get started right now. So first thing first um, in this exercise, according to the ebook, I'm just going to switch over. Uh, getting started, I'm not going to go over the the videos; they're a bit long, uh, so that would drag this uh, demo a little bit uh, a bit too long. Um, but basically, you know, you start your InDesign, you open your file, um, and then you start flowing the text. So you know, the, the flowing text into existing text frames which is what you already have right here, is uh, very easy. Um, so in this case right there, you um, we're going to start actually with a little green frame on the left hand side on the left page right there. Um, you have to locate that museum stats dot uh, doc X, which is a uh, text file from a Word doc. And what you do is you place this document. Basically, it's just like placing an image. So you select your green object, your text frame right here. You go down to File, Place, which is Command D on a Mac or Control D on a PC, and you will locate your document. And then so I go into my folder, into Lesson 5 right there, Museum Stats. That's the document I want to grab. Uh, on the Macintosh, I can hit my space bar, give you a quick preview of it, and that's, yes, that's correct, that's what I want, and I go Open and it just flows the text right in there by default right and by default it's huge i'm just going to zoom in a little bit and you can see that there's that little red square with a little plus that means that it's overset text right so there's the text frame is smaller than the text um, than, than it can contain right so i'm going to switch over to my ebook again and I have to apply this paragraph style that is already set in your in your document. So all I have to do is select the object, and I have already my character styles right here, which only has a bold. The character is just for one word or one letter, and I have my paragraph styles already preset. And in this particular one, it's asking me to use the sidebar. So I just scoot over down to the bottom there uh, in the body text right there in my paragraph styles. If you cannot find your paragraph styles window, again, it's all under window right here. It'll be right in here under styles, paragraph styles, and then that opens up that window right here. All you have to do is select your object, sidebar text right here, and apply it, and that's it. It's uh, So again, you still have a little bit of overset text. So switch back to the ebook. It's applied, we're good. But the problem is you need to resize your text frame. So here there's an option in InDesign to resize your text frame automatically. And I'm just gonna walk you through that. You can right click on it and you go text frame options. On the Mac it's Command B or Control B on the PC. 
And all you have to do right here is you have, so you go auto size, it's turned off. I'm going to turn it on and I go, go height only. I just want to make it taller. And I can change it, as you can see, the preview is turned on. And I can change it from the center. Now you can see it's expanding the top and bottom. But I can also change it from the top. So the, my, the top of my object does not change. Or I can expand it from the bottom. right? So I want, to I want to have it starting from the top, just like that. right? So there's your option right here. You can also do minimum height, et cetera. But I just want to go auto size, height only, starting from the top. So it just expands the bottom, basically, as if I was you know, manually expanding the bottom. That's the first thing, right? Switch back to your ebook. You know what? First thing first, ah, this is what I should have done. Oh, silly me. I should have saved my document. Right now, it's still my raw document for my InDesign uh, files. So I'm going to go under File, Save As, give it a different name, give it a different location as well. I'm going to put that into my demos. InDesign, create a new folder. I'm going to call it A3, as in Assignment 3. And I'm going to call it a three demo. There you go. Now I can save that now. So this is my own personal document. It's not the original file from InDesign. So always start with that. I apologize. I forgot about that. Um, another quick little thing as well. You can see that this is the June, July 2018 before we start flowing the text in. This is in my master page. So I can, you know, I'm there on every single page right here, right? Except this one has been modified manually. It's been unlocked from uh, your master page, which you have touched upon in the newsletter assignment one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my master. I'm going to double click on my master right here. And I'm going to change the date right here. I'm going to put 2021. Simple as that. And because it's a master page, it's my it's going to influence all my pages further down in the document. So I double click again in my document. There's my date right here, 2021. Here, 2018, because this one has been modified and has been unlocked from the master. Therefore, it does not change. But all the other pages have been changed. So to replace and to make sure that those pages, those two pages that I'm that I have the older date on, I can just grab my master right here and then drag it on top. And it replaces the page right here. Same thing here on the right hand side and it replaces the page. And then there it is done. It's fixed. Another another quick thing is that line right here, those blue and red line. They're bleeding off, right? They have uh, the line just comes off the edge of the page. Same thing for the uh, for the uh, image right here, but only at the top and bottom, not on the right hand side. So again, there's a couple of things to fix in this document because I find them a little bit wonky. So what you can do here with a guy on this bicycle, you can just shift the image ever so slightly to the right until the bleed um, until it goes to the frame right there, and then that's that's your bleed. This is your preview. This is your, your document. So it bleeds off the page and it's nice and fixed. But it does not have an actual bleed setup, right? So it does not have your guides here. You're here. You have your uh, your your uh, margin right here with two columns, but you don't have your uh, bleed set up in this document. So we can set that up very, very quickly again. Um, you can go into File, Document Setup right here, which is uh, Shift-Command-P on a on Macintosh. That's the shortcut. And here you have the, the, the margins right there that you have already preset. Everything's all gone, all done, etc. But you have no bleed. So I'm just going to add, you know, using my up arrow on my keyboard, I'm just going to go one and two. There you go. 0.125 inch bleed all the way around. That's happy. And then I can click OK. And now I have my bleed all the way around. So it might be a little bit too much in this case, but at least I have something to uh, to work from. And same thing here. I can just always you know match my image frames to my bleed just to make sure that everything is happy and honky dory. Back in my master quickly again because of my bleed. I just want to make sure that those lines you know well line up right as well again attention to detail right a quick little thing to do can do a huge difference another thing as well there so there's my master ready to go and another thing as well in this document right here back to my pages in there you can see that the lines are appearing in the bottom right there on the right hand side there and it's just it's just not very happy 
um, because this image again is not matching the bleeds. So you just expand your frame right here manually and it's good, right? So we'll get back to that, but this is good. I'm happier with my document. It's starting to look like, you know, like a professional looking document. Um, oh, hey, look at that. This guy does not have a bleed at all. So again, same thing, just gonna do that very quickly. And then we can move on into, there you go. So it's not big enough, actually. I'm just gonna scoot the image down within the frame, click on that target in the center. And there you go, now we have bleed all around. Happy, happy. Hit save, I always remember to hit save. Now switch over to the ebook again. Next, flowing the text manually. Sorry, I missed that. I was, let's go back to the ebook, go back to your flowing text into an existing frame. Um, I skipped that page right there. So as you can see, importing text into an existing text frame, we already have them right here, right? These are my text frame right there. They're ready to go in this document. So I can go, you know, choose type, show hidden characters to see the paragraph returns, the space bar, et cetera, et cetera. So what you can see uh, right now, we don't see any of those, what, what is called invisible characters. So you can go under type and go to the very bottom of your uh, of your menu right here, show hidden characters. And now you can see all those hidden characters. So the little blue dot right there, that's a space. This is the end of a paragraph. Um, if you had a, um, a, a return, like a, um, a new paragraph character, if I hit that, the return key, this is your paragraph key right there. And you can select them, right, of course, and then, of course, delete them to bring back. So here, you can see that there's the beginning of a, of a text frame right here, this little hashtag um, um, or pound icon. So this is how you know you see them right there, right? So we have already we have already done that. Um, so the next thing is flowing the text manually. Switch over again. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna scoot over past the uh, the video right there. So you can create a threading individual text frame by dividing text frame into multiple columns using the general tab. So we're gonna show a few things right there. So again, same thing you need to import or place your uh, your text, right? So again, right here, using your type tool, choose the file place and select, locate and select the features 2018 document. So I'm gonna select that, put my cursor in there. You can see it blinking and then go again, command D or control D to place or you're under file place. And I'm gonna find my feature 2018 document right there and then go click OK. And there it flows automatically within this text frame, but it's too big again. You have also that overset text right there at the bottom right here, the little plus, um, the little uh, red square with a little plus. And you can see in your bottom of your frame right here, it says one error right here, and that's, that's your pre-flight right here. So it's telling you that there's already an error going on, and the error is basically the uh, overset text. Switch back over. And this is how it works, right? So very, very simple. Very simply, uh, you do it. You set using your selection tool right here. You click on that little red square. You click on that little red square right here, and it loads up to onto your um, onto your cursor right here. And if you hover over the next text frame right here, you can see the little link icon. If I click on that, automatically it it threads the text from this this text frame into the next one. It's still overset, right? There's still more text to it, right? So gonna have to do it manually coming from coming from this uh, this frame right here, right? So that's the next step. Switch over, you can see that it's flowing over. That's exactly what we've done, great. Loading the type tool with multiple text files, that's also another cool thing you can do, is you can load a bunch of images as well as load a bunch of text frames all at once. So a quick demo, I'm just going to do that very quickly on the side. Again, if I go under Command D or Place, right, File, Place, right there, I can grab a bunch of files together. I'm pressing or holding my Shift key right there, and I can go click OK. And I have my first document right here, so I can click and drag, and I have my, my text right there. And then I can click and drag for the next one on the right-hand side. And this is the, uh, this is the hotspot text that we have already uh, placed in this little green frame right there. So it's a way to, it's a quick way to load a bunch of text or a lot of, lot of images like this. Same thing, you can do the same thing with a bunch of images. So in this case, I'm just gonna go back to uh, 
um, that file right there, remember, with uh, all those uh, birds and butterflies and whatnot. You can do the exact same thing. So I can grab, a, let's say, a bunch of them, like from five to nine, as an example, because they're fairly small files. And I click OK. And now they're loaded to my cursor, and I can click and drag. And that will be the size of my image right here. If I just click once, that's the size of my file. And sometimes they are huge, right? So in this case, I'm just going to drop them right here. And they're absolutely massive. So I just want, by clicking and dragging, you can actually place it at the right scale, at the right size that you want, within the right um, margins or guides that you have in your document. So that was just an aside. So I'm just going to delete all of those guys. It's just to show you that you can lo load multiple text or multiple images all at once. Go back to the ebook again. Next, there you go, creating text frames while flowing text. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. There's, um, there's a manual way, of course, and then there's a way you can actually create multiple uh, text frames all at once. So again, I'm just going to click on that little overset text icon, the little red square at the bottom down here, and zoom out a little bit so I can see it, what I'm doing. And again, it's loaded on my cursor, and I can just click and drag onto my into my my guides right here into my columns on the on the following page and again it follows the, the text just flows into the next one to see your text thread that's also another quick little thing that you can do especially when you're doing a large document go under view you go extras and then you show text threads and you can see those little blue lines going flowing from one text frame to another to another to another etc so that really really helps you um, for your structure of your document right there. So I'm just going to, again, I'm going to do that again. Click, like, click, click right here, click to the next one right here, and bingo, it flows again. Another way to do it as well, when you want to do multiple text frames, so to flow text into uh, a bunch of uh, text frames that are already threaded, I first have to create the frames, the text frames first. So I'm just going to deselect that. I'm not going to click on my little red square right there. I'm going to select my text tool. Again, I can type the letter T on my keyboard, and it switches to my text tool. As you hover over, you can see all those shortcuts right there. You know, So there's another quick little thing as well. Pen tool is N, type tool is T. So I'm just going to switch over to my type tool. And I'm just going to click and drag right here, right matching on my guides. And as I click and drag, and I, I use my right arrow key on my keyboard, if I click a couple times, you can see that I'm creating three text frames at once. In this case, I want, only want one, so I click the left arrow back to have only two text frames going on at once. And, it, and I'm just going to match my guide right here. And of course, it matches. Each text frame will match even the, the gutter and, uh, in, and the columns. So and I let go of it. And right away, you have two text frames, and they are already threaded. You can see that, uh, that thread in between. Again, I go back to the previous one right there, click on the red little square. Click on that text frame, and again, it flows from one to the next to the next. So that's a very efficient way of working, right? I'll switch over to the ebook, flowing text automatically. You'll now do the auto flow, the remaining text into the booklet. When you auto flow text, InDesign automatically creates new text frames with column guides and pages until all of the overset text is placed. This is ideal for longer projects such as books, et cetera, et cetera. So first you have to go into the uh, using the selection tool, click to the outport on the lower right corner of the text frame in the second column on page two, uh, which is the, your, um, your overset uh, icon again. That loads the text icon and then choose layout, next spread to display page four and five, sure. And then put the position on the load item. So this is how it works. So this is how we, we're going to do some auto flow uh, text. You click over onto that little overset again. And then as you click in your right in your margin right here, you press and hold your shift key as well. And you can see that there's another icon that looks like a little squiggly kind of uh, arrow that attaches to your uh, to your to your cursor. And then you just click once and it goes from one column to another to another to another. So it goes over all of the pages, of course, that you have. So unfortunately, that really messes the, the, the layout uh, a little bit. So that's OK. We can fix that later. Um, we are going to do that in a minute. 
as you can see in the ebook, it's the same problem right there, right? So adding pages, it are also added a page automatically um, to uh, your document right here. It added that last page right there, which is great. Switch back to the ebook, and it also says, you know, choose edit clear, clear to delete the text frames that you don't want, of course, over the photograph. Um, and also using the shift tools that are at, so you know make sure that your frames are are linked etc. Choose edit clear to delete the text frame. So that's pretty easy stuff. So like those two frames, for example, this one and that one, we're just gonna hit that one, delete, delete, um, and then same thing here. I'm just gonna hold and hit um, hold in my shift key, select both, and delete them. So now it flows from this page to the next. And again, here I want to make those a little smaller. So I select both. I click across right there, and then I grab this little, tiny little thing at the bottom right there that allows me to scale it up, right? And then just you know do it manually like this very quickly. So it, again, it flows the text over to the next one, and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to reduce that very quickly. And again, I have a lot of overset text, but the text, uh, the proper paragraph style has not been applied yet. I don't think. Let me see. Paragraph style, it's normal. It's not my body text. So I can just, you know, put my cursor in there, select all. So I go command A or select all. So I go under, go under edit, select all, and it selects all my text right here. And then I can just, you know, apply. A paragraph right here. So body paragraphs, body paragraphs, no indents. I'm thinking it's body paragraphs right there. That should be the text uh, that we are using in this document. So I'm just going to make sure it flows over. Perfect. Good. Yeah, we're good. I, and I can always change it later, right? I can right now. It's I'm not exactly sure if this is a, this supposed to be the paragraph I'm supposed to use. So I switch over to my ebook right there, and it says you know applying paragraph styles to the text. Again, I'm not going to. Look over the uh, video. It's three minutes long. I'm gonna make it quicker. Again, I select all. That's exactly what I did earlier, and I use the body paragraph. So it's perfect. That's exactly what I was supposed to do. Excellent. So choose layout. Go to page one. Enter the page field and click OK. On page one, click on the first paragraph of the article, starting with when I asked Alexis. The very first one right there. The very first paragraph right here. Select this paragraph. You don't really need to select it. You can just you know. Put your cursor in there. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. And you have a drop cap, which is a capitalized, you know, basically a drop capitalized uh, letter in that for this, uh, this already for this paragraph style. So I just go back in there. You know, I can, again, I can select, I can select the whole thing or just put my cursor in there. It doesn't matter. And then I switch over to my paragraph style right here, drop cap right there, and then boom, that little, there's my drop cap right here, the W for the first uh, word on in that paragraph. Next is I want to apply the, uh, I want to apply, uh, oh, I didn't know that. You can click on those images and you can see a little bigger in your ebook. Um, this is a peach bit ebook, by the way. Uh, next time, I, next uh, step actually in the B cycle, that's your, um, that's one of the subtitles or a body header or whatever they call it uh, in uh, in your document. Uh, it's on the following page. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit, scroll down and find my, there it is, B cycle right here. Again, so this is the body paragraph style and I want to have the body head applied. So I just, you know, click on it and there you go. It's, uh, it's applied. I'm thinking Old Town is going to be the same as I want to switch over. Um, yeah, exactly. Place it on the left column, the old town, and the next page, cobblestones, gentrification, farmers market. So I'm going to do those very quickly. There, and then, so of course, you save your document. Next step, adjusting columns. Uh, in this case, I have already done that. Uh, selecting both text frames together and then scoot them back up, right? So I have already done that, selecting two frames at once uh, using my selection tool and scaling them up and down just to, you know, if I press and hold my, my mouse before I move anything, you will see text flowing automatically uh, versus if I just click and drag right away, you don't see anything happen. So I go slow, I press and hold, and then I can drag it around, and then I see my uh, my text flowing like this. So that's a quick way to um, to do some 
basically visualizing what you are actually doing with the tool. I'm just going to zoom out, save that, switch back to the ebook, and then it was going to go adding a jump line page, num page number. So this is quite easy. I just want to make sure that my document has extra pages right there. OK, that's good. I don't really need that extra page, technically. Um, but I'm going to see where my breaks are. So this is pretty good. Farmer's Market starts up here. That's the end of my text right here, the little hashtag again. Uh, this is pretty looking pretty good. It's pretty packed in here. So and we're going to fix one, one small thing. Um, in your paragraph style right here that you that we are using right here, the body paragraph right here, you see this word right there on its own city program and remarks right there, those three words. These are called widows. And to fix that is a widow is a single word on the line at the end of the paragraph. And to fix that is very, very easy, very quick. You just double click on your body paragraph. You don't have to have anything selected. Double click on your body paragraph to edit that paragraph. So I just want to move that in the center. And then you can see that there's a laundry list on the left hand side of a bunch of different options. As you click through them, there's different uh, different specs. So I can see, I'm just going to move that slightly to the left so I can see what I'm doing. So I can see that in, for example, in the B cycle paragraph right here, there is a hyphenation right there, the sub way station, so sub dash way station. So I can turn that off. I can go into my hyphenation uh, my paragraph uh, specifications and options. I mean, in my uh, in my um, body paragraph right there, click on hyphenation, and hyphenation is turned on. And I can turn that off. I just unclick that, and there it is. It there's no more hyphenation anywhere in the document. I still have that widow at the bottom there. It says off grid program just above the B cycle uh, subtitle, and I can get rid of that as well. In a different way, I can go into the indent and spacing right here. And you can see indented spacing is basically an indentation of paragraphs. And in this case, the first line indent is 0.033. That's at the beginning of each paragraph, you have a little bit of an indentation, a first word. That's your first line indent. If I change that, this is what it does. Um, so I'm just going to you know, keep it at 125, for example, just modifying that. You don't have to. But also what I can do here is I can go uh, and select my balance ragged lines right here, just below my alignment right here. And by doing that, as you can see, it balances my paragraphs and it gets rid of my widow right here. So I'm going to keep that on. It's an option. It's not something that you have to do, but I'm just showing you how to do it. Zoom out a little bit, move it back in the center and save. Always, always save. Uh, I use shortcuts for that, Command S or Control S to save. You will do that a lot. Um, all those shortcuts help you work a whole lot faster. So learn them. They're really useful. I just want to scoot down. So to switch over my to my tool, by the way, my move tool, it's the same as Photoshop and Illustrator. It's just press and hold my space bar. Uh, there's still some uh, an extra page down there. So maybe I won't need it. But what I can see right here is I have a line right here that is flowing from the previous page, which is up here. So it's not exactly super happy. So let's see if I can fix that very quickly. I am running out of room up here. Uh, I have the text running over, so it's not exactly perfect either here. So again, you know, by changing um, one thing in your paragraph styles, uh, you know, things change throughout the whole document. So sometimes you have to, um, what I call, massage your document a little bit. So if I select both of those text frames and then expand them down a little bit, see how much I get. No, I run into the other element down here. So this is not going to be happy. So what I can do is I can change my paragraph styles right here. The text that you have right here, which is in body paragraphs, is set at eight point type right here. It's at the, it's at the top in my control bar. And the leading is 11, 11 point. So instead of changing things manually in my control bar, I go to my body paragraph style again. I double click on it. I go to the basic character format right there. And I'm going to change it to instead of 11, I'm going to go 10.5 and see what it does. So see, it tightens things up a little bit. So that's the before and after. It tightens things up a little bit. And that might fix my problem further down. So now it's another problem is farmer's market just moved up right and that's an easy fix again right so because I, what i want to do here 
is I want to have maybe my farmer's market paragraph right here, starting on the following page, which is down here. So what I could do is I can, you know, there's your my return part, my return character right here. So what I could do is I could, you know, hit return of multiple times, right? And then until that bumps out off, but it's not very pretty. You get a lot of extra characters there that are not needed. So what you do is you select your return uh, character right here. And instead of hitting the return key, I hit the enter key on, a, on an expanded keyboard. So on a, on, a, on a laptop, it could be a command return or function return. So you have to, uh, to figure this out on a, on a laptop. But on an expanded keyboard, instead of hitting the return key, I hit the enter. And that makes it what's called a hard return. And that changes the character to this little arrow right here, that, which means that it bumps the text to either the next column or the next text for text frame. And in my case, it is in my next text frame right there. And again, it flows, right? It's still flowing. If I select the text up here, if I move my, my cursor all the way down there, it still flows all the way to the next document. So it's perfect. So this is how to use a hard return. A soft return. It's shift return. You hit the, you press and hold your shift key and you hit return. And a shift return does, I'm just going to demonstrate that very quickly. For example, the, the word right there, you want to have it basically, basically it does a, a back to a line. So if I hit the shift return key, it bumps it one word down, but it stays within the same paragraph. And you can see that new character right there is that, you know, back to line kind of thing character that looks like an L on its side. And that's exactly what that is. It, it does just that. So it means it stays within the same paragraph. If I was to just to hit return, that would create a new paragraph. And that would create, again, that indentation that I have at the beginning of every paragraph. So I don't want that. So I'm going to delete that just for it. This is just a demo. So that's a soft return to just do a, a back to line and a hard return to bump the text over to the next text frame or the next column. So in this case right here, I'm pretty happy with it. I have this extra page. It's not really necessary, but I'm going to keep on going with the ebook. Adding a jump line page number. So this is very, very easy. So you create a text frame using your type tool, and you make a frame approximately one and a half inches wide by a quarter inch high. And we want to have it on the bottom of the page. What is it? Page two, I think. Page one, sorry. Bottom of the page one, or the bottom of, uh, of page one. So I'm just going to switch over to that. So if uh, another quick little shortcut as well, this is a very short document, it's only eight pages, but if it was like 80 pages and I wanted to jump from page one to page 80 to page 67 to back to page one, et cetera, it's a lot of scrolling up and down. So what you do is you command, you hit command J or control J and you can bump it to page one, such as. So at the bottom of, uh, of the right column of page one, I will create a text frame right here. I'm just going to click and drag. I can see in my, I can see my measurements right here. Let's say about, about one and a half or so. I can always change that. So I'm just going to drag that right there. So there's my new text frame. I'm going to make it white so we can see it. I'll give it a fill right there. So there's my text frame right here. And it said one and a half by one quarter high. And I can see my measurement right here in my control bar. So it's almost one and a half and it's almost a quarter of an inch high. So I can use those measurements right here, the width and height right there by clicking on the little arrows, one and a half right there, and now 0.25 in height. Perfect. There you go. I have the right dimensions. I can get rid of my fill and I'm just going to place it in the right spots. I'm going to go again to my um, instructions in the ebook and it tells you to basically line it up to the to the uh, the column on the right hand side. So I'm just going to do this, drag it over, line it up right there. It highlights in green and you can see it snaps to it because I have my smarts guide turned on. Beautiful. And then I will go into uh, my ebook right there. It says using the type tool, click on the place in the insertion point, type museum continued on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that uh, so I don't have to type it. I'm going to go there and go paste. Museum continued on. Go back to my instructions again. And here, what I want to do is um, I want to actually, what I want to do here is I want to insert a special character. So we're going to do this. We're going to insert a special character. So we're just going to keep my marker right there, add a little space bar. I'm going to right click on it and then go insert special character. 
markers next page number and it automatically puts it number two on it because it's on, it'll be on page two here i'm looking for the proper paragraph style here that's the one at the bottom down here continued from to line that's the one i want there you go museum continued on to there it is and i'm going to do the exact same thing right here So there it is, I've applied the uh, continued from and to line. Was, uh, you know, I didn't pay attention to that. And then exploring on your own is basically the last step in this um, exercise, in this assignment, is you are doing the exact opposite. You're doing continued from instead of continued to. So using the selection tool, you duplicate that jump line um, uh, text right here. So I'm just gonna select that and then press and hold my option key. I don't have to copy paste. I can press my option key and then drag it off and that makes a copy of it. And I can just, you know, drag it to the following spread right there. So I'm just gonna keep on moving it all the way to the place that I want, which is at the bottom. And actually, you know, it's actually at the top, sorry. It's actually at the top right up here. They want you to use it to place it at the very top left. Um, using the type tool, so paste and jump line, etc. So um, drag the text frame so it does not, so it does, so it touches, sorry, the top of the text frame in the first column, drag the top of the text frame as necessary to jump line isn't touching the page header. So this is what we want. We want to have something that just kind of, you know, fits in there. It's a bit of a squeeze. There's not very much of a, of a margin in there. But anyways, place it wherever you can so it doesn't, you know, so the objects are not, you know, tapping into one another and touching one another. And then using the type tool, change the word in the text frame from museum continued on to museum continued from. So you just go, instead of on, you go from, and again, select the page number, th page number three, and then in the, num in the jump line right here. So what I can do here, again, right click on it, insert special character, page marker, and then go previous page number. And then it'll be continued from page one. That's it. So this is great when you're doing um, large documents, magazines. Uh, if you have, you know, for example, like a four-page uh, article, and it's interrupted by um, ads uh, or interrupted by another article, and then you have continued on page, you know, 45, for example. And on, on page 45, the text continues, and at the top you say continued from page eight or wherever it was. That's an example. And so that's pretty much um, the whole exercise right here. Uh, at this point, you need to replace the next page number character or the previous, exactly what we've done. Jump line now continued from page two. Review the questions. Which tools let you thread text frames? You can answer those questions. These are for practice. And you're pretty much done with um, assignment three. Uh, as a quick, quicker uh, thing again, I'm just going to zoom out and then scroll down all the way to the bottom. I have that extra page right here, which is not exactly pretty. Uh, I can, you know, go back into my document, select the page and delete. But what I wanted to show you, and I wanted to, you know, I just wanted to uh, get back to that, is you have those lines that cross over two pages. Basically, it's, they cross over the spread. So in this case, I just want to show you this, is when you have a master um, that have lines that cross over two pages. When you have a single page, and in this case you do, the lines continue way past your, your bleed line. So I don't want that. So I want to go back into my master and I'm going to select both lines right here. I'm going to copy them. So I'm going to use my shortcut, Command C, and I'm going to squeeze those two lines and I'm going to match them. So I'm trying to zoom in right there, my little selection node right there in the middle. I'm just gonna make them a little smaller right there. So I'm just gonna scoot over and I'm just gonna make them just to match my center right here, my my, um, my spine. So I have my set of lines on the left page and I need to create a, site, uh, a set of lines on the right page as well. So I go back to my um, edit right there and I go paste in place because remember I copied it first, paste in place, it drops them in the exact same location and again, I'm going to do the same thing, but from the left-hand side. I'm going to zoom in so I can see my little selection node and zoom out again a little bit. That's a little bit too much. Zooming in. There you go. I'm going to try to drag it right there and then go all the way. See, so I'm just passing my center right there so you can see that there's a, a set of line on the left and a set of line on the right page. I'm just going to snap it to the center right here, to my spine. Now I have a set here and I have another set there, right? 
And that, if I save this, go back to my document, go back to my single page at the bottom at the end, you can see that the lines do not go past the edge of the page. It's only on this page only. So that's a quick way to fix small little things. So we fixed some bleeds, we fixed the lines, we applied some paragraph styles, we applied um, the uh, special characters uh, showing the previous, uh, the, the next and the previous page. Um, and also a quick little thing as well. This paragraph right here is a sidebar text. And how come that sidebar text has some bold and some regular in there, right? So there's a myriad, bold, myriad pro bold and myriad pro regular. This is a nestled style in there. So first of all, to create a nestled style, you need to have a character style. So the character style, you can see that there's a bold character style right there. And bold allows you, a character style allows you to just select one word and apply the bold um, style. I'm just going to delete that. Uh, or to, so to one word or just to one letter if you want, right? So if you have, for example, a superscript or a subscript, you can just apply just that style to just one letter. So I'm just not going to do that. But basically, you need to have a character style to be able to do a nestled style in your paragraph. So I'm just going to show you, just going to demonstrate that. So the sidebar text is the paragraph style. I'm going to select anything I have. I'm going to double click on my sidebar text. Paragraph style options right here. And you can see in my laundry list down here, I have a drop caps right here and nestle style. So there's no drop caps. And remember the drop caps for the W right here? That's the drop cap. But I don't have a drop cap in this specific um, paragraphs. If I were to do a drop cap, I would do, you know, like add two lines and then there's my first letter and drops over two lines. Here drops over three lines. Here I have two characters and it just messes things up. So this is how drop caps function. But the nestled style is another thing is you can actually have a character style embedded within your paragraph style. And it's a really cool thing. You'll have another exercise to actually um, work and develop them by yourself. But this is a really cool little feature is here I have my, I can search my, my, my nestled style, which is my character style. Remember the bold character style that I have right here. So I apply it. So there's only one. So it's applied already. And it goes, it goes through one and it goes all the way. It stops at the semicolon right here. If I get rid of that and if I go, I don't know, I can put a letter, for example, I can put an N, for example and see what it does. So it goes bold all the way to N, to the first N that it finds. So in this case, it's urban. It's the last letter of urban. In the location, there's no, <laughs> it doesn't do it. So for example, in this case, you can, again, nestle the style only for very, very specific items. If I delete the N altogether, this is what it does. It just does the very first letter of my, of each paragraph. So I don't want that because it does only one character. So I want to have, I can pull actually this little menu down there and you can you can uh, choose the type of character that you want to or just select it and I'm going to just implement my semicolon and right there this is how it functions so this is a cool cool thing in uh, in design you can have a nestled style it takes a little bit of practice to figure this out but your paragraph styles your character styles your nestled styles all that stuff really help you work faster and it's basically uh, kind of like a it's, a it's a way to program basically your uh, the style for your document so that's it basically i've uh, you know fixed uh, a bunch of stuff i modified my paragraph styles i did not modify my character styles i modified my paragraph styles to be able to make it a little tighter to fit better in my document i created my bleed i extended my images up to the bleed and this is a regular, perfectly well done document. We also modified the master page member. We changed the date to 2021. And that is the final file right here of this of uh, assignment number three. So if you can do all that, you get 100%. So do it. And hit save.